Let's learn in this Lightboard session about the different options for deploying a build agent within Azure DevOps or a runner in GitHub Actions. We'll start by exploring the Microsoft hosted agents and then we'll explore the self-hosted agent that you can run it within your own infrastructure and within your own network using your own virtual machine that could be on-prem virtual machine, Azure virtual machine, Azure virtual machine scale set or it can also run as a container within Azure container apps or within an AKS cluster. Let's see how this works. A DevOps pipeline will start typically with the source code for our application and also for our infrastructure. So from here we would find folders for the application and other folders for the infrastructure files. And then we would find the main file for DevOps, which is the Azure DevOps file, devops.yaml file. This one will contain the CI/CD pipeline. This could be Azure DevOps or .github file in the case of uh, GitHub. Both are YAML codes. So this pipeline will run typically within a build agent. In this Lightboard session, we want to explore what are the different options. So there are already different options. There are the main default option, which you will find in the documentation, which is using an option called Microsoft Hosted Agent. I write MS for Microsoft. With this option, you would get an Azure virtual machine. Of course, you don't get access to that VM as an administrator. You just get that VM as a service for you. And you will get within that VM software installed here that is the build agent that will be installed as a process so that your pipeline will be run by that build agent process. So Azure provisions multiple virtual machines to run as a build agent for multiple pipelines for multiple uh, customers. So we would have multiple uh, VMs that will act as a build agent. So this option is the default one and it have multiple advantages. First advantage is that it's the easiest option. You don't need to provision anything and it's easy because here you get a managed environment. This virtual machine is managed for you. You don't need to update it and so on. It's all managed by Microsoft. Second advantage is that this infrastructure is scalable. You need a VM, you get a VM. You need multiple VMs, you can get multiple VMs to run your pipelines in parallel. For example, in the case you have multiple teams or you are defining parallel jobs to run within the same stage. But of course, just to mention, this is a paid option. You need to pay for the parallel uh, agents or the parallel jobs. Another advantage is that here, each time you request to build, to run your uh, DevOps agent or DevOps pipeline, it will run on a new build agent. And this means that's a new Azure v virtual machine that will be provisioned for you. It will be provisioned from scratch from an existing uh, template. So this means that within that VM, it's a new clean virtual machine. And by clean here, I mean there is no cache. So when you build, for example, your application, you will download packages, external packages, those packages, once your pipeline terminates, that virtual machine will be reset and thus all the cache will be removed for you. So the next time you request another build agent, you will get it already reset. So there is no user data on that virtual machine. However, there is two major challenges for this uh, choice. First of all here is that this Azure virtual machine is actually a standard virtual machine, standard virtual machine SKU. So it's using the general purpose uh, VMs in Azure, which are the D machines which are still suitable for, let's say, 90% of the customers, but for the customers who want something specific for their needs, this won't be the right solution. If they want to use GPU, for example, or a specific hardware architecture, they will need to use a dedicated virtual machine. We'll explore that option later. The second major disadvantage, and this one is really a major disadvantage, is that this virtual machine is managed by Microsoft. So it's within the Microsoft network and it's out of your network. This means you don't have the control over that uh, uh, virtual machine. What is the impact of this? Let's take a look. So when you have your build agent and you want to deploy to your environment, here you would have your uh, environment, whether that is Azure or on-premise, typically your environment will sit behind a firewall. So you define some firewall rules to allow and deny access to your uh, environment. And those rules will be applied to the build agent. So now the build agent will be challenged in order to access the firewall so it can deploy to your environment. To allow that build agent to access your firewall, you will need its 
FQDN for that build agent, but it doesn't have an FQDN. The FQDN for Azure DevOps or for GitHub, that's for the server itself. It's not for the build agents. So then you will ask, does it have an IP address? And yes, it does have an IP address. But the problem that IP address will change because each time you request a build agent, you will get another build agent. It's not always the same instance and you cannot retain the same instance of Azure DevOps. So you'll get multiple IP addresses. And to limit the number of IPs for those build agents, actually you will need to open up, you cannot limit at the end, but you will need to open up for all the IP addresses of Azure DevOps agents in, inside the region where you have your Azure DevOps deployed. And that's lots of uh, IP addresses. That's why it's challenging. To add to that, to those list of challenges, actually there is another challenge, which is that those IP addresses will change each week. So within Microsoft we launch, we have actually a weekly update where we publish a JSON file that contains the new IP addresses that you need to open up for your firewall in order for the built agent to access and deploy to your environment. This might be okay for some organizations, but for some other organizations, for the major of them, this is a security issue. So they don't want to open up for all of those uh, IP addresses. So they will require that to have more control over the built agent. And there where we have the second option for deploying and hosting a built agent. The second option is the one that is using self-hosted agent. The self-hosted agent means is that Microsoft will give you the build agent executable file and then you run it within your own infrastructure. So you get that build agent, you can download it either from GitHub or from Azure DevOps and then you run it where you want. And here we will see that we would have multiple options for the hosting. So let's say here is actually custom host. The hosting ho options here could be a virtual machine, whether that is an on-premise virtual machine or it could be also within an Azure virtual machine within your own virtual network. And we have also a third interesting option that is using an Azure virtual machine scale set. Azure virtual machine scale set is a group of virtual machines that will scale together. So if you need, for example, to run multiple parallel jobs at once at the same time, then you would typically use Azure virtual machine uh, scale set to allow your pipelines to uh, scale horizontally. And at the end, because the build agent is just a package, it's an executable file, so you can run it within a virtual machine, but to better utilize uh, your resources, you can also run it within a container. So you can run it within a container, and this means, because now it's a container, then you can run it on any service that runs containers, like AKS, for example, if you are using Azure. And you can also run it on Azure container apps. And by the way, we provide a Terraform implementation for uh, deploying those build agents for building it and deploying in, into an AKS cluster as a deployment or deploying it into a container app as a job. And of course, this will require you to create a registry to host that image. That registry could be any container registry like ACR, for example, Azure Container Registry to, host, to build the image and then deploy that image into those different uh, uh, targets. So the advantages of using the self-hosted option is that now this build agent is within your network and you can use custom image or custom hardware. You are free to configure as you want your Azure virtual machine. If you are using some custom uh, tools you want to install within that VM, those tools are required to run your uh, CI CD pipelines, then you can do it. Another advantage, was, which was a disadvantage for the Microsoft hosted, actually it's an advantage or a disadvantage depending on how you see it, that's using the cache. If you are building applications that requires to download multiple gigabytes of uh, uh, pa external packages, then using the cache would enhance and would accelerate your build pipeline. But another advantage for using a self-hosted, especially when using uh, an Azure resources like an Azure virtual machine or a VMSS or container apps or AKS, is that here you can use managed identity. 
we know that managed identity works only on Azure resources. So if you use Azure resources, you'll be able to use managed identity, which will give you enhanced uh, security. So you don't deal with service principles when you are using an Azure virtual machine to deploy to Azure. And of course, it still have an inconvenience, which is that here you need to manage that infrastructure yourself. So typically you own it, so you manage it. So it's up to you now to uh, update those build agents, to update your VMs, to update your container, your AKS and so on. So the first reason for organizations to use the self-hosted is that they want to have more control over those build agents. So they want to put it in their own network so they avoid this problem of the firewall. Let's see how this will be solved right now. Because now if I have a self-hosted agent, that will run within a virtual machine that I own, it can actually deploy to my environment with no issues. You don't even need to go through that uh, firewall because it's still in my environment. However, here the issue will be from Azure DevOps itself. It's not an issue, but it is just a note that you need to be aware of. So here at the end, who will trigger that pipeline is Azure DevOps itself. It will send that file into the build agent. So here you'd have Azure uh, DevOps on this side, and then your self-hosted agent will actually try to connect to Azure DevOps. And this is very important to note here is that it's the self-hosted who will try to connect to the Azure DevOps, not the vice versa. So to do it, it will be using the long pull connection. It's a connection that lasts for about uh, 15, seconds and then it will renew that connection. So this means that you don't need to open up access from, for Azure DevOps to access your infra because it's the hosted agent that will try to connect to Azure DevOps. However, here, because to leave your uh, environment, you will typically go through an Azure uh, firewall. So you'll need to open access for Azure DevOps from your firewall. So here you would have your Azure firewall that will inspect all the egress uh, traffic. So there you just configure it to open up access for uh, dev.azure.com, open up access for the endpoints for the uh, artifacts if you are using it, and for the Git repo for Azure ID if you are using it, or Azure Entra. And within our documentation, we actually give you all the links that you should add to your uh, firewall rules. I want to come back to a detail here if we are using the self-hosted actually within the virtual machine scale set or the VM or even the on-prem virtual machine will give you a file called the deployment script. That script will go to deploy the build agent for you. It will download it from Microsoft and then it will install it within your uh, custom host. And then you can add your own uh, scripts to install your preferred and uh, custom tools if you want to. With this deployment script, it means, that it means that each time you deploy your virtual machine scale set or you run your pipeline, it will create a new instance within that virtual machine scale set and then it will run that script each time. That might take mo more time to run your uh, whole pipeline. So what you can do in this case is that you can use a custom image. So you create a custom VM image within Azure, you save it in Azure and then you configure your virtual machine scale set to use that uh, uh, custom VM image that have already the build agent already deployed. And it's worth noting that here, if you are using this option for v VMSS, you would also have a latency that is the time for provisioning a virtual machine. So of course you can scale this VMSS from zero to N instances. If it's zero and then you trigger a pipeline, then it will wait about three minutes, let's say, or two to three minutes in order to provision with the virtual machine, then it will run that pipeline for you. So to reduce this latency, you can just configure the uh, auto scaling option to be from one to N, for example, instead of zero to N. So at the end, what I would recommend here for organizations who wants to take a decision on how and where to deploy their built agents, I would first recommend using the Microsoft hosted agent if that fits your requirement. But if you want to have more control over your network and you are using zero trust network, then you will fall into this self-hosted agent. And with the self-hosted agent, I will recommend first uh, considering the Azure virtual machine scale set, the Azure VMSS, because that gives you a semi-managed infrastructure. If that doesn't fill your requirement, then you should consider the Azure virtual uh, machine. 
And then if you are familiar with containers and you are building containers, then you might consider using the Azure Container Apps, which is a serverless infrastructure. It will allow you to auto scale automatically and quickly, and it's a cost sufficient. So you can provision one container instance for all your organization. And from there you give each organization would have its own build agent that is uh, that will run as a job within the container app. And that job could uh, could be auto scaled from zero to n instances for each project and for each organization. And at the end, if you are already uh, using an AKS cluster for deploying your applications, then you might consider using uh, AKS to deploy your self hosted build agent which will look a little bit like a GitOps approach where the built agent is installed within the cluster itself. I hope this was clear and useful. Thank you.